Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about our summer reading prize book program. And we also have representatives from um, the summer collaboratives, CSLP, and I read here with us. Thank you so much for being here with us, Becca Bowen and Don Krauss. So we're going to hear from them in a little while, but first Sarah and I are going to kick this off by telling you a little bit about our Summer Reading Prize Book Program and how it works. So hi, I'm Grace Larachelle. I'm the Eastern Children's and Teens Specialist here on the CATS team, which is short for Children's and Teen Services. Before coming to b and I was a librarian myself for 10 years in the Northeast in New Hampshire um, and mostly in children's rooms in New Hampshire. So I know about that post-summer reading feeling, that deep breath you have to take at the end of the summer. Um, and I was also a branch manager in Massachusetts. I was part of state committees and youth, um, youth group organizations with libraries, um, lots of conference planning and fun things like that. So I'm delighted now to be here on the children's team at Baker and Taylor where I get to help youth librarians with their selection needs and of course with summer reading prize books. And I'm joined here today with my colleague who's my counterpart for the Western half of the country and also former librarian, Sarah Shepard. Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Shepard. Um, like Grace said, I handle the Western United States. So that is everything west of the Mississippi River plus Michigan, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, before I came over to BNT, I was at the Houston Public Library for 14 years. Um, I did various roles in youth services. I worked my way up. The last six, I was the yeah, children's services coordinator. Um, one of the things I've always loved at the libraries was summer reading, planning it at the branches and then at the system level. And now I get to help libraries with Grace with countries, uh, with libraries across the country and their summer reading programs and getting books and homes. So super exciting, just gets bigger and better, right? Um, so we'll dive right in a little bit on our summer reading program and how it works. Um, so we have popular new books for all ages offered at a steep discount that you can use as prizes and giveaways. Um, these, this is our sixth year offering this program and we have it down to a science. Um, so why do we offer the program? We are the market leader and a public library focused company, and we're committed to ensuring libraries have an excellent up-to-date selection of books to use in giveaway programs. Everything from summer reading prize incentives to books for community-wide reads, book clubs, and more. We've taken your feedback to ensure our lists include something for every reader in your community from babies all the way up through adults this year, which is new for us. Um, the titles that your patrons are going to clamor to add to their home library. These books are all straight from the publishers with trade bindings, so you're going to feel confident that your patrons are getting quality books as well. Yeah, and this program is really a labor of love for all of us on the CATS team. Like we said, Sarah and I are both former public librarians, worked with youth services for many years, and we just love summer reading. And we wanna support your summer reading and make it as simple as possible for you to get books into the hands of the kiddos in your community. So if you have interest in these prize books that you order through Title Source, just get in touch with us. We, we can quote you a discount. Our discount ranges from 45% to 50% off. And we would be happy to talk with you more about what yours is. So Sarah, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about how to use the prize book list? Yep. I'm going to tell you kind of the steps to, to get yeah. started. I was like joking to myself when I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, it's only these like 27 easy steps. It's not actually 27. <laughs> it's less than that. Um, but here are the steps to getting discounted prize books. Um, first step, make sure you have a book only account set up in Title Source 360. Book only accounts have no processing of any kind. Basically, you take the book from the warehouse, stick it in a box and ship it to your library without doing anything to it. Um, if you're not sure if you have an account that's book only, you can reach out to your CATS rep, either Grace or me, and we'll find out for you. Um, if you don't already have a book only account, it's okay. We can help you get one set up. It takes about a week or so. So don't wait till the last minute when you're like, I really have to order my books today. Go ahead and set up that book only account and then you'll have it ready to go when you need it. Um, then you're going to go into Title Source 360 and create your cart. Um, if you are not a Title Source 360 user, I know there's a lot of 
programming type folks that order books for summer reading, um, as opposed to your collection development folks who are very well versed in Title Source 360. If you are like, I don't know how to use Title Source, I don't want to learn how to use Title Source, please can you help me? Yes, Grace or I can send you the Excel spreadsheet. You can send it and let us know what you're interested in and we can make the cart for you. That's fine. We like to make things easy for librarians. Um, so you're going to create your cart. Let me or Grace, whoever's your person, know that your cart is ready. And then we're going to go in and put in some notes. Um, that's going to contain shipping information and, of course, your discount. Um, and then we will email you back to let you know that your cart's ready to order. And in the email, we always like to include the number of books that you have in your cart and your discounted price. So note that the estimated net price in Title Source 360 is not your actual price. Um, it will be invoiced with the correct discounted price. I know it's kind of confusing. Um, so that's why Grace and I are here to answer all questions. And if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, any old time, feel free to throw questions in there um, and we'll answer them. All right. So after you get that email from me or Grace saying, here's what your price is, here's what your, your number of books is, you know, double check, make sure it looks like what you thought it should look like. And then you can make adjustments if you need to. Then you're going to submit your cart in Title Source 360. So if you are not a person that can submit carts, you know, you may send them over to an acquisitions person and they are the ones who actually push the orange submit order button. That's fine. You know, you just do whatever your ordering process is. But the most important thing is making sure we have the notes in there before that cart gets submitted. If you are a library that does EDI ordering, you're going to want to not do that <laughs> for summer reading books. You got to do it through title source. Make sure you get with me or Grace before you submit your order just to make sure we get those notes in the cart so you get your good discount. Um, and then you just wait for your books to come in. <laughs> it's easy. Um, we do encourage you to place your orders early so you can secure your titles. And we can always hold the ship. So if you want to place an order now, but you don't want the books to come until like closer to summer because you don't have storage space for all these books, we can hold them for you and ship them like May 15th or a date of your choosing. You just let us know. We'll put it in the notes for you. You can order as many times as you want to um, throughout the sale period. It's from January 1st through the end of August. Um, for any type of giveaways, we do call it summer reading, but you know, you can use it for anything where you're giving away books. Um, so some of the other ways that we know that people use them, they'll use them for a thousand books before kindergarten milestone prizes. Um, some type, some people have gotten grant opportunities where it's just like they want to get books in homes. Um, so you can pick from that list just to stretch that money a little bit further and get more books into more homes. Um, I have heard of libraries doing things like national night out and they have a table and they have books and they're just giving books away to people. They don't want to give away candy. They want to give away books because they're the library. Um, if you have like a back to school outreach, you know, if you have like a backpack program where people are, you know, giving backpacks to kids and the library is out there, maybe you want to give out books, you know, that are fun for kids. So you can use this any way you want to use it. Um, not just for summer reading. Um, just remember that to get in touch with me or Grace um, so that we can get you the good discount as it is a little bit of a manual process. And we do also keep an eye on your orders to make sure that they're arriving to you perfectly the way you want them and that you're getting the right discount. Um, Grace, do you want to talk about some of the programming pieces like our live author interviews that we're doing this year? Do I? I'm so excited to talk to you all about this because we are doing much more than we did in years past. Like Sarah said, every year we just get better and better. And so every year we have, we host live virtual author interviews and author readings on Zoom. So you at the library can stream them, have a little streaming party, use it in your programming um, just to supplement your summer program. Um, and this year, we are really excited to have several Zoom author interviews that you can add into your calendar for your summer reading programs. Um, one of the really fun events that I'm super excited about is a Learn to Draw event with several illustrators and graphic novelists. Um, so you can set up the program, you can have your tables out with pens and paper and markers, and you'll be ready to go. Just stream it. 
and it's going to be fantastic. One of our authors for that event will be the Cal Lacotte medalist, Seabird Honor winner, the fabulous Jason Chin, who is also the illustrator, one of the illustrators for I Read this year, which we are so excited about. Um, and there'll be more to come on these events in the coming weeks. But today we are most excited to talk about our kickoff event, which I'm excited about. I know Sarah is super excited about it. Yes, kickoff. Uh, I just can't wait. We are going to be hosting the award winners, Chris Gravenstein, author of Mr. Lemoncello's Library and so much more, and Hannah Kahn, author of Amina's Voice and so much more, both award-winning authors. But even more exciting is that the person who's going to be interviewing them is going to be the fabulous Michael Threets, who we just absolutely adore. And it's going to be a really, really fun event that you can stream in the library. Maybe you just want to watch it yourself. I already see a yay, Michael, in the chat. <laughs> I knew I would. We're, he is so lovely, right? We're and so excited. Just the best. So we are absolutely delighted to announce that. Um, we will have more on that details. It's a simple Zoom link, so it's super easy for you to set up in your library, have kids watch, um, have your library kids watch, <laughs> as Michael would say, um, and the library grown-ups too. Um, we're also excited this year to have some fantastic additions to your orders. So not only are you receiving your prize books, this year we're also going to offer for everybody free downloadable posters that you can print out, use as prizes, use as giveaways, whatever you like. We're also going to have coloring sheets available to download, use as prizes, giveaways, whatever you like. Um, and we are also going to offer temporary tattoos to libraries who order 500 units or more. So we're going to have a few extras for you this year, which is really fun. Um, and we're just so excited about all of those things. So I'm going to dive into our special guests and letting them talk a little bit about their programs and some books. And so I'm going to start off by introducing to you Becca Boland from iRead. Becca is the content and development manager at iRead, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about the program, Read, Renew, Repeat theme. Thank you so much for being here with us, Becca. We really are so glad that you are here. It is such an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Um, the last time I was able to do a Baker and Taylor um, webinar for iRead, I was actually I'm still working in libraries. Um, and um, so it's really fun to be here in my my new role. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I was a librarian in public libraries working with everyone from babies through adult um, in my in the scope of my career for um, almost 20 years before um, I started with iRead. Um, I had the great pleasure of, um, as a librarian, um, being able to uh, work on the iRead committee. So um, it's, it's deep in my heart. Um, and I'm really, really excited to share um, 2024 with you. Um, there you'll see um, the general email for iRead, um, as well as my personal email. If you have any questions at all, if you need any clarifications, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and I'm going to talk about it more in um, a little bit, but um, our website is um, iReadProgram.org. Um, so if you could progress to the next slide for me. Fabulous. Um, thank you. Um, so um, I read's focus for 2024 is read, renew, repeat. Um, I'm not going to read the whole mission statement to you all because as librarians, I'm sure you're you're well versed in the art of, of reading. Um, and it is on our website as well if you'd like to reference it later. Um, but as a general concept, um, what we're talking about in 2024 is conservation. So both conservation of animals in the planet and the world around us, but also for conservation of self, so self-care and that sort of thing as well. So you can kind of go both ways or um, choose one kind of path that works best for you and your library. Um, and um, we cover in our resource guide um, all of those things from, you know, conservation type programming uh, to self-care, spa, um, reading nook, um, kind of, kind of, 
programming as well. Um, so I'm going to ask you to go to the next slide first, first, next, one of these times. I'm so sorry. This is my first day back um, after being out for a couple of weeks. And so my brain is really trying hard to catch up. Um, so I appreciate all of your, your kindness and your patience with me. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit um, about our, our four featured artists um, for 2024. Um, one of the things that we really love um, about the art every year, but particularly this year, is that it is so different. Um, the artists each interpreted the theme very, very differently. Um, I had an a really amazing opportunity to um, meet and speak with Jason Chin um, about kind of the process that he went through in creating the art for I Read. Um, and it was really, really cool. Um, I, I won't go through the whole interview with you all, but um, he talked a lot about how originally he kind of had a globe and people and animals kind of going around it. And that kind of morphed into um, animals and people, um, particularly animals that are either endangered or threatened um, interacting in the library. So um, the animals have like a slight amount of um, like humanistic characteristics, but they're still very true to um, the, the life of, of and the look of those particular animals. Um, they're, they're pretty true to, to form. Um, and it's the art is just so, so gorgeous. It's um, watercolor based. Um, we had to transfer it all to digital files um, because that's the way that he works. Um, and you'll see that reflected um, in the art that we create. Um, the I Read Summer theme is Read, Renew, Repeat. Um, and that there's, it is the Jason Chin that is um, doing the virtual pro, uh, program with BNT. So um, you'll have an opportunity to, uh, to get to know him. He's really such a lovely human and so interesting. Um, so I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for that for you all. Um, Zoe Persico, um, you may recognize her from Greta and the Giants, uh, the Greta Thunberg um, picture book. Um, she did a selection of really, really adorable um, woodland creatures for us. Um, so you'll see a lot of that, the otter there, the Arctic fox are two examples, but we have all kinds of really, really beautiful um, animals from her. Um, and as well as some um, teens in the mountains kind of caring for their environment um, and, uh, you know, planting trees, counting birds, um, that sort of thing. I'm absolutely in love with her art as well. Um, it's just really dynamic and really, really gorgeous. Um, Holly Bradley is a graphic designer, um, and it's a very kind of cartoony neighborhood style. Um, and uh, we have this lovely tiger uh, that we're using kind of as a, a mascot this summer. Um, and it's just, you know, kids enjoying their neighborhood, cleaning up, planting gardens, reading outside, really, really beautiful. Um, James Stanley is a manga and anime graphic artist. Um, he's based out of Taipei. He's worked on a lot of, um, you know, kind of, uh, I'm going to check my notes real quick because I don't want to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so he is, um, like I said, he's out of Taipei and um, he has worked with JM Animations in Seoul and Korea um, and he's worked on TV shows like Avatar The Last Airbender and Hold on one moment, please. Sorry, thank you for your patience. Nice. I didn't, I did not want to uh, do that in the mic. Um, so we're really excited. We also actually have a few other artists um, in our resource guide as well, but these are our featured ones. There is so much, um, there's so much beautiful art this year and I'm really, really excited. And you can use all of it. You can choose some of the art for some ages. You can use some of the art for other ages. Um, you know, you can use some of the art in the summer. You can use some of the art for your winter reading program, whatever works best for you. You can use some of it for summer, some of it for a year round program, a thousand books before a kindergarten, whatever you want to do with it. Um, 
once you access the resource guide, it's all there for you. So um, please, please, um, I'm going to put a link to our website in the chat and um, as well as um, a link to our um, store. So you can get all of the bookmarks and logs and pencils and all of those other fabulous stuff. The resource guide has all of this beautiful art, but it also has um, just endless, endless, endless ideas and for um, programs and getting started and social media posts and arts and crafts and book lists and movie lists and music lists and everything you could possibly need from beginning to end for your summer reading program is all going to be found there. Um, on our website, there's also a lot of links to our social media posts. So, um, you know, check there as well. Um, so I'm not going to spend any more time talking about uh, I read, at least I don't think so. If you could go to, okay, no, <laughs> I was like, I don't think I am. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys an overview and then I'm going to talk about some books that are super big favorites of mine and um, I think would work really, really great with our our summer reading theme. Um, some of these I think are in the specials um, for Baker and Taylor. So take a peek and look at that list. Um, I'm really, really love, I recently found um, Rachel, Ag oh boy, uh, you would think as a follow fellow former ski, I would know how to pronounce this, but um, Agnotovsky is how I would guess. Um, but no matter how you pronounce her name, um, the books that she creates are absolute stunners. They're so beautiful. They have these beautiful cross sections. I don't know about you all, but there's something about a cross section that just like really appeals to kids. Um, and so this is all about the inside of a flower and it talks about different kinds of flowers and fruiting flowers versus non-fruiting flowers. And um, it just, it's a beautiful overview of, um, yeah, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, uh, someone said that they ordered books um, by Rachel last year and the kids really love them. There are also a number of really, really great free resources on her website, printables, downloadables that are um, are for libraries to use. So you can have those out in your um, your library for people to pick up and use along with the books. They're just absolutely beautiful. Some of them are kind of crafts and some of them are more coloring pages, but I would highly recommend going to her, her site and using those for editions. There's a whole series of these books that she's done. I think... Um, uh it's a whole what's inside it's a bird's nest a caterpillar cocoon um which i was like isn't that a chrysalis but uh, that's a different discussion for a different time um it's like a four to seven year old range for these um if you're looking for something a little bit older i've had really good success with um julia rothman's anatomy book so like ocean anatomy, wildlife anatomy, nature anatomy. It's got a similar vibe, but it's definitely for olders and that can go up through adults. So you could do programming, um, like a series of programmings around this kind of style of books uh, that take a closer look at um, nature and that sort of thing on a uh, kind of a, a closer scale. So fabulous. That's what I thought too. So I don't know, but I, I don't name these books. So um, I, I thought it was a, a chrysalis as well. Um, and if you would go to the next one. Um, Night Owl Night. Does anyone know this book? It is so, so beautiful. Um, I love the illustrations. I love the dynamic um, pick, uh, illustrations. There's a, a lot of movement. There's a lot of, um, you can really get a beautiful feeling. Um, I love the contrast between the outdoor illustrations and the indoor illustrations. Um, it's kind of a modern version of like an owl moon. So um, if that's a favorite, it's a really great companion book for that. Um, it's actually based on the author's experience, um, banding Sawet owls um, for um, I think in Massachusetts for the for the Audubon Drumlin Farm Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, there's an amazing activity kit that goes along with this book. So if you are using it for a story time or programming, you have that all there and ready for you. 
Um, and she breaks it down. One of the things I really love about the way she breaks down the activity kits that go along with this book um, is that she has a set for K through two and a set for three three to five. So you can eat, do um, different levels of programming depending on who you're doing the program for. And that's all there and great. Oh, I'm hearing so many people talk about um, how many how everybody loves this book. And I'm so, so glad. Um, it's really beautiful. If you haven't read it, read it. It's non, it's one of, it's in that kind of nonfiction that reads like fiction vein that has been happening a lot in um, nonfiction picture books lately. So just absolutely beautiful. If you could go to the next one, please. Um, I threw this in this morning. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> because does anybody know this book um we were actually at our local library um this uh over winter break and they had a program where they read this book not a monster and i loved 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 this book so much and it goes so great with the i read um theme and i don't know about you all but in my experience um uh oh my gosh the ex axolotls are like the new sloths like remember how sloths used to be on everything like I'm seeing axolotls on everything now and like why wouldn't you want an axolotl on something because they are adorable um, and they look like they're smiling um, and it's so stinking cute but part of why I love this book is that it talks about the traits of the um, amphib amphibian um, and what makes it special like it has gills for its whole life which is what you see those kind of um, their gills that come out of its head are um, it talks about the um, the myth the Aztec myth that um, is like the origin of the species and then it also talks about the way um, that pollution has impacted um, their environment they live in one place in Mexico City and that's it um, and for a while, they're extinct or they're um, they're endangered because um, it had become so polluted that it was impacting um, their uh, it was impacting them. Um, they were endangered, but they're cleaning up the lakes. They talk about that, and I love the way um, that they talk of um, they really seamlessly blend Spanish into the English text um, and they do it in a really beautiful way. So if it's like, you know, I don't know if you can really see on this this page, but they talk about Azul and it's in bold and it's in blue. So it's like it gives you the context clues there, which is lovely and wonderful. Next. Axolotl. I'm not being able to keep up with the chat, but I just saw that and that is stinking hilarious. Um, okay, so a little bit older, a lot older. This is a teen book. Um, are you all familiar with The Marrow Thieves? Um, it is so, so great. Um, uh, the the author is a, a Metis, I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sure, um, writer um, from the Georgian Bay Metis Nation um, in on Ontario. It's a YA dystopian novel. There are so many resources for this online in terms of discussions and programming. Um, so really all you have to do is read the book and then you have your program set. Um, it's basically, it talks about how humanity is being destroyed through global morning, warming and now an evil, even more extreme than that is lurking. Um, they've come to realize that the indigenous folks of uh, North America um, are the only people that can dream. So they're harvesting their bone marrow in order to try to fix that in the rest of um, the world. And it's it's just, it's phenomenal. It's so discussable. It's really easy to sell. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous book. Um, and then just really quickly, um, a set of three, if you're going the uh, conservation self-care kind of route, um, there are, if you would wouldn't mind advancing to the next slide for me. Um, uh, Malika Chopra has this collection that Just Breathe and Just Feel are for older older um, readers. Um, My Body is a Rainbow is um, for younger readers. And it all talks about feelings and how to express your feelings and like what to do with your feelings and um, some meditation stuff, some mindfulness stuff. Um, and the ways that um, your feelings can impact um, the way you move in the world and that sort of thing. And if 
you're interested in, in reflecting on that a little bit, these are really great books for that. Um, so if you're kind of going, Meti, did I get that right? Meti, oh, thank you so much for the pronunciation. I know that I looked it up and then it was gone. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, so I think that that's all I have. Um, I hope I didn't go too long. Um, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to put my contact info in the chat. So if I missed something, I missed a question, whatever, um, reach out to me. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing what's happening in iRead in 2024, Becca. Um, if there are any questions for Becca, if you want to go ahead and put them in the chat right now, that's great. So she can see it easily and, uh, and, and answer it. I'm definitely adding the Marrow Thieves to my TV, my to be read list. Sounds great. Um, and so if you have questions again, just put them in the chat. And we are so excited to be partnering with iRead. Um, next, we're going to be hearing from Don Kraus, who is the executive director at the Collaborative Summer Reading Program, um, to talk to us about the CSLP theme this year, which is Adventure Begins at Your Library. Um, she's going to talk some, about some books that she loves that work with the theme and much more. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dawn. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really thrilled to be in such great company with the CATS team and Becca with iRead. Um, so it's great to be talking about summer library programming, even though outside there's five inches of snow here in uh, northeastern Kansas. But, you know, I know we all kind of eat, sleep, and drink up summer reading year round, at least here at CSLP and I read. So, um, great, always great to be talking summer reading. <laughs> and there is no better time right, than right now to start planning, right? Because it's winter and we need to think about summer, keep ourselves warm. So, thank you so much for inviting me and having me here. Um, I am the new executive director of the Collaborative Summer Library Program, or CSLP as it's commonly referred to. And um, I've only been on the job since uh, May, but uh, it has been an adventure in itself, let me tell you. Um, CSLP is, if you'll go to the next slide, there's some info on there. CSLP is a non nonprofit formed way back in 1987, and it really was uh, all about libraries wanting to share resources around summer reading, and we are still here doing that today. So we have 45 states and island nations involved, and they are doing the work, and they are making the decisions for us. We are fueled and shaped by volunteers here and practitioners out in the library field that really you know, give us your great ideas and share your big brains with us around themes and programs and reading lists. And I'm so glad that Becca shared some great um, titles because my, my presentation is really going to focus a little more on um, programs. And our theme for this year, Adventure Begins at Your Library, is um, one of those themes like I read themes that really can be applied in a lot of different in a different way based on your community and the likes um, of your uh, patrons. So um, it's so far been really well received. So we're, we're very happy about that. Could you go to the next slide for me, please? So at CSLP, um, we empower libraries to foster community and we do that through summer reading. Um, I always say that summer reading is one of those things that it's the maybe the biggest um, Thing that public libraries do all together, all at once throughout the nation and even somewhat worldwide. And so it is one of those programs that's so recognizable by, by so many people. And um, it's great that we invest so many resources in it and that libraries have so many choices about um, what they can use and how they can use it and they can put their own spin on it. And I think that's what uh, CSLP and iRead are kind of all about. Um, so we really do share resources and that's why I'm here today, share some um, resources and give you some professional support, hopefully. So if you'll go to the next slide for me. In a nutshell, we're a group of people trying to make summer programming easier for practitioners and more meaningful to communities. And 
We do that through um, presenting a theme and a manual and incentives and all of those things that go into kind of exciting communities about summer reading. And these are some of our um, pieces of artwork and our themes um, from, from past years that you may recognize. Next slide, please. CSLP has a storefront. Um, it's at shop.cslpreads.org. It's where we sell all of our um, merchandise that goes along with how you decorate your library and what your staff wears and what you're gonna give out to folks for, for re uh, reaching those reading milestones. Our store is open to anyone and you can go in and shop. You do not need registration. You can come in as a guest and just shop. Um, just know that if you're in a non-member state, that you will be charged an additional $20 membership fee in order to place an order. And that's a one-time annual fee only. And that all goes right back into um, providing you low prices, as low as we can go in our store. Um, we're really not out to make a profit. We're really out to try to sell you things that are at the lowest possible cost that we can provide them to you at. And um, we really do try to um, make sure that what the variety of products we have is responsive to, to member libraries. But um, all of that, all of those funds go back into our programs, into, into providing good professional development for you, um, possible grant programs in the future coming down the pipe. We really do want to be giving back to, to the libraries that support CSLP. The next slide, please. One of the reasons CSLP was created and really what we're, what we're most known for um, is our programming manual. It's by librarians, for librarians. Uh, it's really um, very grassroots effort every year to come together around a theme and produce a programming manual that you can just take and use out of the box if you need to, or you can adapt. It's 261 pages this year with 12 chapters. There's 80 pages of standalone printables alone. So if you are out there, in a small library or you're under-resourced, you know, you, these are things that you can literally just print and give out. They're at great activities that um, are that easy to do if that's where you're at with summer reading. Um, we have high quality artwork, just like iRead does. I'm blown away by the artwork for, for iReads uh, this year. It's really, really beautiful. Lots of great work there. We also have some really dynamic graphics and um, great illustrators this year. Our illustrators are um, Juana Martinez Neal and Rob Donnelly this year. Um, they've done a really interesting uh, mix um, for early literacy and children. Juana did, and then Rob Donnelly did um, teens and adults for us this year. So we have slogans in various colors, black and white clip art, individualized images that are extracted from our posters so that you can use those and mix and match on other pieces of marketing. Um, images designed for marketing to each age group, uh, social media banners, PowerPoint files, if you're going to present to schools, it's all it packed in this manual for $15.95 for online access. It is free to most of you because many of you are in member states, so you just need to ask your state rep for access to it. They'll provide you a code for the online version, and all of this is available to you that way. And I'll put my info in the chat as well so that you can reach out to me if you need to. Next slide, please. Our chapter this year for adventure, there's so many ways that you can take adventure. Uh, we have adventures in the dark, adventures in nature, adventures in imagination, which I think is really super cool because, you know, I didn't get out to adventuring a lot when I was a kid, but I did go to the library and I adventured in my imagination all the time. Uh, there's adventures close to home and then there's puzzles, scavenger hunts and games, which, you know, who doesn't like those things? So. We're really trying to um, you know, push you in a certain direction if you want to, but you can use a little bit of a mix and match of all of these things and keep people guessing this summer, like what you're gonna do next. Next slide, please. Our manual is super sliced and diced and these suggestions have really come from you all, our members. Um, we have PDFs for story time themes, standalone printables, as I already said, just for arts and crafts, if you like decorations and displays, you can go to that PDF, games and activities, low cost. I know many of us are very cost conscious and um, we have a chapter just for those low cost programs. Passive programming, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, the STEM programming for all of those uh, science and tech folks out there. And then um, solo librarian friendly, because I know 
I saw a lot of uh, libraries in Kansas that I used to work with that I know are solos. And so we have a solo friendly chapter as well. So I hope you'll take a look at that. Next slide, please. The chapter that I really want to focus on for this particular presentation is chapter four, which is called Dream It Up, Adventures in Imagination, since this one is near and dear to my heart. I really like it. Um, the chapter is usually divided by age groups, so there's always early literacy elements to it, um, story time books, story time songs, and then some stay and play activities. And then we get into children, tweens, tweens and teens, and then some adults. And also we're really trying to venture more into multi-generational um, and family programming because there's just something great about building community across the age group and across you know, generations that I think more libraries are gravitating towards nowadays. Um, so we're trying to, to focus a little bit more on that. So hopefully you'll see more of that in our future manuals as well. The program I really would like to focus on um, for this round is, uh, it's called You Choose the Adventure. It's geared towards children and, and tweens, but really I think this can be adapted for all ages. Um, so if you'll go to the next slide, please. Our adventure theme um, for many people, especially if you're a child of the 80s like me, People just tend to think of the Choose Your Own Adventure series. And this is a series from the 80s that was really YA based and it really paired gaming with role playing in books. So you could choose as the reader where you were gonna go in the books. And um, they've really expanded this, um, the publishing in, in these books and there's many more age groups now involved. So there are some for, for um, early readers as well nowadays. So if you'll go to the next slide, please. So our program is a bit of a riff on this. It's called You Choose the Adventure. And you'll see up at the top here um, who the program is geared towards, um, the fact that it's passive. It's also low cost. So it would be in the low cost chapter that I talked about. It's also in the decoration and display chapter because it is a passive programming that you would choose an area of your library where you would have a table, maybe in front of a blank wall or in front of a bulletin board where you would set this up. And you would basically create a story that is serialized over some weeks so that you keep people coming back to see what happens to your character, whoever you invent. Um, I know there's tons of creative writers in our communities. If you're not a creative writer as, as a, a library staff member, then somebody in your community is a creative writer, I guarantee it, and can help you come up with um, a serialized type of story. You can also go to the Create Your Own Story Wiki where there are um, stories that are in the public domain. We do have to you know, be cognizant of copyright with this. So it is great to have your own original story. Um, and there's also, if you have a teen advisory board, this is something that you might have them do or some volunteers that are into creative writing. Even if you have a group um, locally, that's a great way to partner with them. So you create a kind of a skeleton of a serialized story and you put out a segment of that story um, in very large print somehow on this wonderful decorative uh, board or wall that you're gonna have. And there's a ballot box that goes along with this. So ballots and some pencils, a ballot box for the votes and then some content for the voting. But over the weeks, everyone's gonna decide where the story goes. So what happens to your character is gonna be up to the patrons that come in the library. And you could, you could take this in a, a number of different directions. And I like it if you maybe do something that has to do with your local area or a local historical figure to kind of tie in your community and maybe even some partners can come in. So I think you can you can really expand on this if you're gonna do a scavenger hunt, which is in another one of our chapters. You might also have local areas that are on the scavenger hunt that are incorporated in your story for passive programming. So, you know, there's a lot of ways I think you can integrate this um, and just have, have a lot of fun with it. But over the weeks, everyone's uh, gonna be choosing. And then at the end, you're gonna have kind of this complete story that you could do something with maybe at your end of summer event. Um, you could have someone read it out or you could you know, just 
say how it went throughout and display it, keep it on display. So it's also becomes kind of a decorative element in your library. So I, as a frequent public library user, always like when new stuff pops up in my library in the foyer, the Manhattan, Kansas um, Public Library does a great job of kind of changing it up there. And um, I always look there and I always get into conversations with people around those little passive um, programming areas. So I think it's a good community builder and just something new and fun. If you'll go to the next slide. At the end of each of our chapters here, um, this is a good example. You'll see some resources. There are web resources, usually picture books, um, and then any recommended uh, other books. So here there's some recommended series, just like the Choose Your Own Adventure series that you could put out and display near this um, Choose Your Own Adventure type um, passive program. Um, next slide, please. And I'm just gonna end with, um, that was inspiration, I hope, <laughs> to start delving into your summer programming. But um, also at the end of our manual, we have a book list, which is an all ages book list. So we have them at the end of the chapters, but we then put it all together comprehensively. So you can just go through here and look at what's in your collection already and highlight those and make sure that, you know, you're going to want to put those out during summer. And it's a little bit of a pre-planning tool for you. But also, if you don't have some of these and you want to purchase them, it's a good time um, to, you know, make those purchases and get that all set up. And I know um, our friends at Katz and Baker and Taylor have our book lists and hopefully they'll be able to lead you to some of these titles in a really easy manner just to make um, purchasing a lot more um, simple this year. So we're really excited about that as well. And um, just another note, in addition to um, this year's theme of adventure, we have a summer programming archive under manual downloads on our website where you can get access just like you can with iRead to just all kinds of programs and artwork and slogans that you can use year round as well. So there's just so much um, programming uh, content here that um, you could take advantage of, uh, usually for free, courtesy of your state library or your, your library agency in your state. Um, I think that's it for me. Um, I've really enjoyed um, being here. And so if you have any questions or any um, um, needs or any suggestions for us at CSLP, um, we are doing right now it's always, you know, we're always working in advance, and I know I read can relate to this more than anyone, but, you know, we always have to work um, so many years ahead of where we are. So right now we're taking programming suggestions for 2026, which is a dinosaur-related theme called Unearth a Story, which I know many of you are really excited about dinosaurs, because who's not excited about dinosaurs? But we're, we're, currently putting together our 2025 manual right now with all of our volunteer committees that dedicate so much of their time combing through your ideas and getting them down to the best of the best um, for 2025 Color Our World is the theme. So um, I'm really excited about that one too. I think um, that has a lot of great uh, creative applications. You know, we love our crafts and our creativity in libraries. So um, look for that coming in 2025. Thank you so much, Dawn. We are so excited to partner with you and we appreciate you going through all of these fun programs. It's just fantastic. There are, I would like to say, on the list that we have for our summer prize books, just so you all know, we do have books that are specifically in the theme for iRead and for CSLP on our website now. So if you are like, I really like to give away books that just, you know, have to do with the adventure theme, we have a list for those. Um, and some of the books uh, that are on both of the lists for iRead and also for um, CSLP, both on um, those lists are also in the manuals and, you know, in the um, activities and the programs. So we have a read, renew, repeat list. We have an adventure list. We can point you in that direction, both Sarah and I. Um, where do I find those book suggestions on the BNT website? Great question, Laura. I'm going to tell you. You can find them by going to Title Source, 
then you're going to click on browse selection lists then children's and teen and there is a big header that says um, summer uh, reading prize incentives and there's a whole bunch of lists on there it's you can look at the full list. You can look at just chapter books. You can look just at early readers, easy readers, just at picture books, just at board books. But you can also look in themes because we've heard that feedback from librarians that we want, you know, we want to see books that have to do with this particular theme or that particular theme. And we have them all broken out there for you. Um, so if you have any questions about any of that, if you have questions for Becca, if you have questions for Don, if you have questions for Sarah and I, please throw them in the chat. We would be happy to answer them as we kind of wrap up here. Um, I do know somebody had mentioned my slides stuck a little bit. And so I can zip backwards to that slide on the process really quickly. But we are just know that we will go through the process of ordering with you when you talk to us. So we are happy to go over all of this with you again. Um, it's less complicated than it seems. <laughs> so just get in touch with Sarah and I. We can help you create your cart and then we'll get your discount put in there for that. We also, just as a note, we will send you the recording. If you missed any part of it, if you know you're on the desk and somebody called you away, that's okay. We have a recording that will go out to all of you. You can also just get in touch with us, Sarah. And I would love to hear about your summer reading program and talk you through it one on one. Just give us a send us an email, give us a call. Any other questions? I'm trying to think. Everybody is just saying thank you, and they loved both of your presentations so much. As did I. Thank you, Becca. Thank you, Don. Wonderful. Well, we are so excited. Hopefully this has inspired you a little bit to get talking about and thinking about your summer while it's cold. We love to think about the warmth. I mean, all of you in California, like we said, we're all very jealous, except you guys, you're already warm. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Doesn't look like we have any more questions in the chat. So just thank you so much for attending. And we look forward to talking with you more about summer reading very, very soon. Thank you.